probably wouldn't trust a robot to babysit your kids or write you a prescription or even cut your hair. So why should you trust one to manage your money? Robo-advisors have been steadily gaining popularity since their introduction in 2008, with total client assets now exceeding $1 trillion and expected to be $2.9 trillion by 2025. That's a lot of money to put under the care of a bunch of machines. Let's hope they don't become self-aware and use it to finance the great robot uprising. Despite the name, there are no actual robots involved. The term robo-advisor refers to algorithms that automatically manage an investment portfolio based on your financial situation and goals. These are tools that financial experts have had access to for decades, but are now available to anyone. There are dozens to choose from, like Betterment and Wealthfront, and most traditional brokerages are now offering their own versions. But should you use one? And how can you know which one is right for you? Much like a human financial advisor, a robo-advisor will begin by asking you a bunch of questions about yourself. How much do you make a year? How much do you have saved? How much are you willing to invest? What are you saving for? Retirement, a house, your kid's college? How much risk can you handle? It uses that information to build an investment portfolio mathematically engineered to meet your goals and continually updates it as the market changes. One of the biggest advantages of robo-advisors is their low barrier of entry. Most human advisors charge an annual fee of around 1 to 2% of your total account balance and require a minimum investment in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. Robo-advisors, on the other hand, typically charge less than half of that, and most have extremely low to no balance requirements. How can they afford to do that? by automating tasks that are difficult and time-consuming for humans to do. Two of the major ones are rebalancing and tax loss harvesting. In finance, rebalancing refers to the buying and selling of assets to maintain a certain level of allocation or risk. Let's say you and your financial advisor decide that your optimal investment strategy is to have 30% in emerging markets, 30% in traditional blue chips, and 40% in government bonds. If your emerging market stocks rally, it will throw off this balance, and your advisor will sell some off and reinvest it in other categories to get you back to your desired ratio. Of course, selling stocks at a profit incurs a capital gains tax, and that's where tax loss harvesting comes in. By strategically selling other stocks at a loss, your advisor can offset the gains and minimize your tax bill. Because the practice can be abused, the IRS has very strict rules about how and when it can be done. Rebalancing and tax loss harvesting are both powerful tools for getting the most out of your portfolio. They're also a big pain in the butt, which is why many human advisors will only do them for you once a year. But robo-advisors can do them every day, finding opportunities and strategies that no human eye could see. The downside of this automation is that you have little to no control over which stocks you own. Robo-advisors are solidly based on modern portfolio theory, which states that the best strategy for most investors is to diversify their portfolio to just match the market. But if you're the kind of investor who wants to try to beat the market by picking individual stocks, then a robo-advisor won't be enough for you. Instead, you might use a trading app like Robinhood, which lets you buy individual stocks while avoiding the usual fees and minimums. But be warned, while a few have made fortunes this way, like Warren Buffett, the vast majority of such investors underperform the market. Another reason you may not want to rely on a robo-advisor is if you have very specific or complex financial needs, like estate planning or an unusual tax situation. Though they've become much more sophisticated over the last decade, they're still designed to fulfill pretty basic investment functions. Some people also want the human touch that comes with a flesh and blood advisor. Money is, after all, a highly emotional topic. Advisors do more than crunch numbers. They listen, they educate, they help you understand what your goals really are and how much risk you're really willing to tolerate. A robo-advisor won't be there to talk you off the ledge when the market is having a bad day.
Still, for those who are just entering the world of investing, robo-advisors are a sound and cost-effective tool that has opened the door to millions of people who are essentially excluded by high fees and balance minimums. If you're thinking about using one, it's pretty easy to compare rates and services online. Make sure they offer rebalancing and tax loss harvesting at no additional cost. If you want your portfolio to reflect your values, you can find some that allow you to prioritize socially responsible investments. And if you still crave the personal touch, many online brokerages now supplement your robo-advisor with a human advisor for much less than they would traditionally cost. But remember that technology is constantly evolving. Robo-advisors can spare you from having to watch your portfolio every day, but you should still know how they work and what changes are on the horizon. Advancements in AI are expanding what areas of financial planning can be automated, and you should research any new services before diving in. That said, so far they've been doing a pretty good job with basic investments, so if that's your need, you can feel safer with a robot handling your portfolio than a pair of scissors. <laughs> and, and that's, that's our, our two cents. cents. Before you go, could a blind gamer beat you in Mortal Kombat? Have you ever heard of the gay rodeo? And why are these guys putting underwear on goats? Subcultured, a brand new documentary series from PBS, answers those questions and so many more, exploring lesser known communities and folks that have had a major impact on the mainstream. Check it out over on PBS Voices, link in our description, and let them know that Two Cents sent you. Thanks to our patrons for keeping Two Cents financially healthy. Click the link in the description to become a Two Cents patron.